Okay guys, um, I'm going to show you a few sort of DIY uh, pottery tool alternatives that you can use that you probably have laying around your house. Um, so you don't need to uh, go out and purchase a bunch of pottery tools. In fact, everything that you need you can find in your home or out there for cheap or free. So here we go. Okay, so um, we have a few things here. So I was showing you earlier working with this sponge. So this is actually just cut up from a larger sponge. Um, super cheap, actually. This is one fourth of a one euro sponge. But if you don't have that lying around, um, if you have an old kitchen sponge, you can also use that for the exact same use. Um, or you use, um, these are actually makeup sponges that are really nice for smoothing things out. Um, I don't use makeup myself, but I bought these specifically for um, smoothing clay. So you can do that if you have old makeup sponges lying around. Um, if you have none of that, you can also just use a cloth. So just use, you know, an old rag or something or an old towel. Um, it basically functions the same. Just holds a little bit less water, which is why we like sponges, but it's the same thing. So um, now you see these guys a lot. These are called ribs and these are really nice for smoothing things out. And these are, you know, tools that are specific to clay. However, you can also use um, a spoon for the same purpose. So this is for like, you know, if you have a wrinkly piece of clay, you can kind of smooth it out, right? Uh, but you could also use a spoon for that. Yeah, it does the exact same thing, right? Got some finger uh, prints in there. You just smooth it out with a spoon. Um, or you can use a old um, card, so an old gift card or something. These actually work really great. A lot of potters keep these in their studios just for um, this purpose. So just smooth it out. Okay, so what else do we have here? Um, I showed you already in another video uh, the uh, fork. Um, versus the stool. So this is really great for um, scratching the clay. Not only does it add nice texture, but it's really important for um, the process of slipping and scoring. So sticking two pieces of clay together, you always want to scratch the clay first. Um, I'll probably do a separate video just on that, but um, fork instead of a specific pottery tool. Great. <laughs> so what else do we have? Um, there's lots of like shaping and um, yeah, different tools that you can use for that, um, you know, carving and adding textures and stuff, um, smoothing things out, making circles or whatever. Um, you don't need specific pottery tools for that. This is actually for uh, cake decorating, I think. Um, so this is not even a pottery tool. Um, but if you have some chopsticks laying around, you can use them for the exact same thing. Um, again, a spoon or a fork um, or uh, yeah, even a pencil. Like I use pencils a lot, especially for signing pieces. That's what I usually use. So I'll just use a pencil to write my name into the piece, right? So you don't need anything specific. Um, that's a pottery tool. So we've done those, we've done those. Uh, this is a really easy one. This is a pottery knife that I, well, it's actually a kitchen knife that I've designated as a pottery knife. This is my actual kitchen knife. A lot sharper, so be careful. But um, both are exactly the same thing. Um, so this is a tool we call a hole cutter. Um, and it's for making holes. So you can see it just cuts out a little hole pretty handy, especially if you're making like a planter or something. Um, but you don't need that. You can use a drill bit. So the cool thing about a drill bit is not only can you cut all the way through in a perfect hole, but you could also do like a half of a, uh, like you don't, you can drill like halfway through. So you can make like a little, um, yeah indent and like well the reason I like it is because it removes the clay it's not just like pushing the clay it's actually removing the clay um so you don't have any ridges or anything um this is actually how I make um the little eyes on my pure pots I use a drill bit 
not this one because it has this point here, but uh, normal drill bit. Um, so one thing that that I couldn't really figure out a replacement for is um, this tool. So these types of tools are, well, we call them trimming tools because we use them a lot in um, throwing on the wheel for trimming, but we also use them a lot in carving. Um, I can't for the life of me think of a alternative to this tool, um, at least not one that's very simple. Of course, you could flatten some wire and stick it into a stump or like a cork or something. Um, but that said, these tools are a buck each. So, yeah. And they're only really useful in hand building for carving. So if you're not interested in carving, you don't even need them. Um, then there's the needle tool. This is really nice for um, cutting um, and random things. Um, we use it a lot, especially on the wheel, but you can cut with it. Um, you can probably make more precise cuts with this tool than with um, the knife. However, this is a specific pottery tool and we don't need that. We can use an actual needle or a safety pin, right? So you can just, like this is again, only if you need to do something really precise. So maybe you don't even need this, but you can cut something out, you know, with a needle that way. So you don't need any, you don't need this. Okay. Um. Last things are rolling pin. So later on, I will be showing you how to make pottery uh, slab building specifically with a rolling pin. However, if you don't have one of these guys lying around, you can also use um, a bottle. So just like when you're cooking, um, you don't need, like when you're making a pie. I didn't have one of these for the longest times. So I just used a bottle. Um, so yeah. Don't go out and buy a rolling pin, just buy a bottle or just use a bottle. I assume you have a bottle at least. Okay, and then the last one I want to show you is this guy. So this guy is really handy for um, working on pieces. It, it not only elevates it up more to your eye height, but it also uh, turns super handy. I didn't have one of these for a really long time. I got this from Bosna. I think this is an awesome deal. It's only 30 bucks from Bosna um, in case you're Berlin local. Uh, but uh, you don't actually need this. You can use a stack of books. So let me lower the camera. So <clears throat> I did this for a really long time. It does the exact same thing. Just turn your piece on the books. You know, you can stick a piece of... Um, newspaper down or something to protect the book but yeah if you're just elevating it up you truly truly don't need a specific tool for adding elevation you need a stack of books a box whatever you need um yeah there's uh, a lot of people out there trying to sell you a lot of stuff but you really just don't need just don't need it um another little extra that I can think of just now Actually, two more ideas I have for you just off the top of my head. Or um, we have these cookie cutters in the studio. These are literally cookie cutters. Like this is the side for the scalloped edge cookie. This is the side for the round edge cookie. Um, I bought them for the studio, but they are made for the kitchen. Um, same with these stamps here. Someone brought these into the studio. And they're just normal stamps, you know, maybe you have these lying around in your kids' um, su art supplies or something, but you can definitely use these in clay. So there you go. It works. Um, and you can also raid your trash bin. So this, for example, I kept because I was like, hmm, that's the perfect round, you know, thing. So it's just the end of a tape uh, thing. but. Yeah, just look at the art supplies you have, you know. Um, you can use the uh, back of your paintbrush. Say you're a painter, use the back of your paintbrush to uh, sculpt the clay. Like, you don't need anything specific to uh, pottery to work with clay. There you go.